Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Greg Jones from Motorcycle and Power Sports News. Welcome to a new episode of Chic Shifts. Joining us as always is Sean Rucker of Sport Bike Chic. And today we're elaborating on a topic that we covered a little bit last week um, with overcoming fear. Uh, but today we're gonna talk a little bit more about the safety aspects and riding safely and being safe on the road. And some of that has to do with the things that you wear as well. Um, so Sean, you know, obviously, Starting Sport Bike Chic, you did it more for the fit of apparel and the look of apparel, but it also comes with the function, and a big part of that function is the safety aspect. Um, and we'll get into apparel in a second here, but let's just talk about riding safely first. Mm -hmm. You know, what does that mean to you? That means having the appropriate training, the knowledge of actually how to operate a motorcycle, mm -hmm. right? Knowing where your controls are, knowing how to stop quickly, knowing how to react in a curve, um, and some of those basic pieces, and being able to put those into practice when the time comes. Yeah. It's one thing to know all these things, but unless you're able to apply them in those emergency situations as you're riding down the street or what have you, then, mm, that that's where the rubber really like literally hits the road. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> absolutely. And and I don't want to make a blanket statement here or assume, but I, I know that there's a decent amount of riders who probably just they, they pick up a bike, they kind of figure it out, they go out there and start riding, and don't necessarily go through you know the right ways to to learn how to ride or ride safely. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that and and where people should be going to. To learn i was one of those people okay so, <laughs> okay so do you regret it like do you wish that you had done the training prior or, or would you do it again the same way well mine's an interesting story i took the training about five years prior before i even thought about buying a motorcycle okay. right so by the time i bought that motorcycle i had no idea how to even start it mm -hmm. right so i actually asked the guy hey can you actually ride that back home he's like no that's not how this works right right <laughs> right but I practice on my own. YouTube has a lot of information, but at the same time, eh, it's it's a lot of information. What I needed was the correct information and what the very specific information, something I knew that was foundational, that was tried, that was true, mm -hmm. that was tested, all this other stuff. So that's one of the reasons I chose to go back to the um, Motor Motorcycle Safety Foundation course, the BRC one, yeah. so that I could get that foundation in place again. Yes, I was riding on the back roads. I already had my endorsement in place, but I was riding on the back roads, really trying to get familiar with the motorcycle. And I had the basics, but I really needed to go back to that course again, just yeah. so I'll understand what exactly I'm supposed to do with these basics and how to apply them again. Because they take you through a series of, um, of exercises that allow you to be more familiar um, to test different um, different scenarios in a pretend street environment yeah. and really allow you to be able to practice and hone in some of those basic skills. Again, I took the basic riding course one, mm -hmm. so it was really foundational, really starting to learn the very basics of operating the motorcycle, basic scenarios, stopping quicker, mm -hmm. handling yourself in the curve, all the things that I really needed to know anyways. Every motorcyclist needs to know. Right. Um, because depending where you are, there are a lot of curves out there and you gotta be able to negotiate those safely. Yeah, yeah. And, and how long have you been riding now? For about 15 years. Okay. So. And, and is that, training course kind of the only one that you've done or have you have you gone to seek you know continued training as you've continued to ride i've done a couple of trainings okay. so and, and do you recommend that people you know do more than just the one if they've been riding for a long time oh absolutely yeah absolutely so it's one thing to take the basic rider course absolutely but then there's also another to start to correct some of those habits and learn different ways of riding, yeah. right? There's not one way of doing everything, mm -hmm. right? So the more I was experienced with certain aspects, the more comfortable I was using, let's just say the front brake, what have you, yeah. then how do you use that more effectively? So I, went, I did go to a training course last year. Um, it was a one day course, excellent course. And I rode to South Carolina to do this training and I, I did it, I came back the same day. So it was a long day, but it was absolutely phenomenal all the things that i was able to learn all the things i started thinking about and trying to put into practice from that exercise on the way back home so 
a lot of the things I was able to, I was able to learn and carry with me and still make sure I'm practice, practicing today, yeah. but still trying to distinguish that from what I'm teaching folks or what I'm coaching folks to do when right. they, we're taking the basic course. So there are different aspects that um, that apply depending on your skill set and your level of expertise. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So Sean, we teased the fact that apparel plays into this um, because you know that's what it's made for. It's made to, to fit the environment that you're riding in, but also in the case of a fall or a crash or anything that, that you're protected. Mm -hmm. Obviously different states have different rules about helmets and things like that, but it's, it's always a smart decision to, to gear up, right? Absolutely. And obviously at Sport Bike Chic, you know, that's part of what you guys do with, with different pieces of apparel for women. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that aspect of riding safely and, and being geared up properly? Absolutely. So. One thing that I'm a firm believer in is not having to pay for medical, <laughs> yeah, right? right. Be, being in the healthcare field as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you, don't, you don't want that. No, not at all. But then, you know, when, I mean, there are spills, there are hospital bills, there are medical bills, there's a physical pain, there's all kinds of aspects associated with that fall. Yeah. And you want to be able to minimize that fall as much as possible. You're not going to be able to protect against everything. A break is a break, right. Right? right? But what you do want to be able to do is, one, put yourself in a, you know, a good an environment as possible, give yourself the best opportunity to kind of get through it firmly. Mm -hmm. So yes, having the, the helmet on, yes, riding safe, safe, safely, making good, um, good solid choices, but then also with as many distracted drivers as there are, as many things that happen out there, if something does happen, we want to be able to at least provide products that will help with that um, that scenario. Yeah. So with our gear, we actually are operating with two layers, right? Obviously, we have this. There's a single layer, a single layer clothing, but then we actually have the dual layer. So we have the um, the abrasion resistance on the bottom, and then we have the actual materials on the top. So yeah. we also have our level two protection that's included with the gear. So a lot of things that we have. Um, you're buying a complete pair of pants, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to make you actually buy it. Go out and buy your hip protection and go buy your knee protection. Right. Like that's going to it's be standard yeah. with the with your products. So having that two layers, yes, there are different way of doing things. Yes, um, you know, it can get warmer. It's period. It's two layers of clothes, but at the same time going through two layers is going to be a heck of a lot more difficult than going through one. So yeah. when I started off, I think making sure that we had the basics in place, making sure that those two layers and the, um, the um, impact resistance or impact protection, those were the things that were most important um, for me and making sure that we have quality products that are being presented. Right. And are there opportunities to explore different pieces? Sure. But at the same time, making sure that we have the functionality in place and we have the adjustability in place. I think those are the things that really um, we were trying to consider when we actually bring things to the market. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, your whole deal is that it, that it fits well, it looks good, uh, and it's safe, so. Absolutely. You know, all, all three check marks there. So Absolutely. Why, why wouldn't you wear it, right? I, 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 there's no reason why I wouldn't wear it. <laughs> Sean, anything else that uh, we didn't quite touch on in terms of riding safely or just when it comes to the gear that, that you want viewers to know? Wear the gear, right? Wear the gear. If you have the gear, wear the gear. I know sometimes, you know, in the very beginning, years ago, I'd, I'd, I'd be okay with riding without the pads because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, just going down the street. But now our gear, our pants, they come with the padding install. Everything comes with the padding install, so you don't have to go back and take it out unless you wash it, obviously. And if it's in there, adjust it to where you need it to be and just ride with it and see yeah. how it feels, right? Yeah. Um, is, there's nothing worse than actually having it and not using it and needing it when it's important. Right. Right. So I was riding down here or riding up here and, you know, it rained, but I had my rain gear in my backpack for a good portion of it, the very beginning part. Right. And I'm thinking, wait, I have rain gear. I'm getting rained on, yeah. right? What was the point? So yes, you stop, you change clothes, but having the appropriate gear for what you're doing is gonna be important. So if you have the gear, jeans, jackets, what have you, um, riding so or wear it. And yeah. you know, we try to make the products as affordable as possible so you're not paying astronomical prices, but you want to bring quality to the products without all the cost. Um, so I think we've done, we've been pretty successful to that, relatively comparable to some of the other folks. 
um, but still, again, trying to make sure we focus on the fit, the size, and the functionality of it, yeah. and the quality as well. Right, yeah, absolutely. Well, excellent. Well, Sean, obviously we can talk about riding safely uh, probably for a while, but I, I think we touched on you know, those training aspects and making sure that you know, you're doing the right things out there on the road, as well mm -hmm. as wearing the appropriate gear. And uh, guys, obviously Sport Bike Chic uh, for the women out there, you know, Sean uh, has, has apparel for you, so make sure you guys are checking that out at sportbikechic.com. We appreciate you watching this new episode of Chic Shifts, and uh, we'll hope to catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.